Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including The Promised Neverland, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Michelle Ander. Hello. Andy Potter. Hello. And April Collins. Hi there. One last time to discuss The Promised Neverland Season 1, as it is the season finale, Episode 12, 150146, that we'll be talking about today. It aired yesterday in Japan, and it is the last episode just of the season, though, as we learned this week that The Promised Neverland has been renewed for Season 2 and will be airing oh. next year. Yay. Hooray! I didn't Yay. know. That's good news. Yeah, and in 20, the year after uh, the first season premiered, which is very rare in anime, so this is exciting, very popular anime. Clearly, everyone wants Season 2 and we'll be getting it next year but here we got the season one finale uh make sure you've seen this episode spoilers for this and all previous episodes of the promise neverland check out our previous promise neverland discussions we talked about it every week of the season at the overly animated podcast find us at overlyanimated.com or search for us on itunes at overlyanimated.com slash overlyanimated.com slash itunes or our youtube is youtube.com slash overly animated um again spoilers big finale here michelle what did you think all right, so this episode was such a pleasant surprise. I I now understand why they ended the last episode where they did, because I was like, wait, so like they're at the wall, but they haven't done anything with the wall. That's so weird. But like it was to make room for all the Isabella stuff, which was important, and I'm glad that that was put in there. Um, I... I'm so high on this episode. Like, there there are things I'm going to talk about later in terms of manga stuff. But, like, all in all, it did such a good job. I feel like there, there are so many particular things that I thought were such smart choices. And one of the ones that I think the anime actually did that was an improvement on was, like, it intercut them doing wall stuff with, like, the backstory for the training and Isabella mm-hmm. figuring out information and Ray hearing, like, all the plans that have been going on for two months that he wasn't privy to. And, like, the the juxtaposition and pacing of those cuts were very smartly chosen. And they, they did what, like, so many of the other episodes failed to do because in the other episodes, like... It's just like these long drawn out talks of like, you know, you know, reverse shots back and forth and maybe a random wide shot for no reason. And it just kind of dragged the whole conversation down, which like, you know, is kind of how it is in the manga. But the manga, you know, you you have like these different panels that are displayed in this way that feels very dynamic when you're reading that like an anime just can't replicate. So this like intercutting the stuff like kind of not necessarily chronologically like that was such a brilliant decision to do something that like the anime could bring to the table in a way that felt a lot more visually relevant that the manga didn't quite do as effectively um so that i was really happy about that i also think just like the i don't it felt like such a good earned like payoff to this first arc's conclusion. Like everything made sense. Like you figure all this stuff out that had been going behind the scenes. And like that kind of like excitement just keeps building and building and building till the finish. And it was so well done. And the music that gets really over the top finally felt relevant and not kind of out of nowhere. Um, It was great. Like it all, it just, it worked together so, so well. I'm so happy. Definitely my favorite episode of the season. It also makes me kind of angry. Like if this could exist, clearly like maybe other things could have been better, but maybe like this is them finally like finding their full footing and confidence in the structure of how they're going to do this moving forward. So if that's true, season two is going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Wow, nice. Best of the season. Better than oh, episode absolutely. one? Well, episode yeah. one. No, well, okay. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Sure. That oh, is yeah. quite a hot take. Um, okay, well, we'll talk about it. I think animes are typically really good in the beginning and the end, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how, I don't know how encouraged I'd be by this. Animes a lot of times are a little man in the middle, but you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe season two more resources. Uh, but yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll speculate about what season two might, uh, consist of later. Andy, what did you think of this finale? Uh, am I allowed to curse? That's still no. No, no cursing. Aww. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is a pure uh, show. Uh, it's I'm okay. sorry. Show. Why can't he swear? It's a no, pure, no, it's I... a pure show about children. No, I understand. I understand. I understand. Okay. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, he's not here. You can't. You can't just attack him like that. He's not here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know. I'm allowed to attack him, Dylan, because he attacked me since episode one. <laughs> Phil was Phil. relevant in the finale. What I are you mad about? Moment. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I think the show just trolled you with the cliffhanger. That episode 11 cliffhanger is like, oh my god, is Phil evil? No, it's just, it, it's just there. Okay. <laughs> there was nothing more than Phil, but he still was important. And it's, okay. The point is that this episode is really good. The Isabella stuff was great. Mm. Phil made me mad for stuff that had nothing to do with the actual show. Andy, are you what's your what are your thoughts on Phil being four years old? I did not know he was four years old. I did not know he was four years old either. He looks like a four year old. I mean, he's pretty small. He's really. I mean, smart. he has the requisite height. Okay, I'll give you that. Is there a requisite height that I'm unaware of for four year olds? All the clip behind are about the same height, so I, I guess would say that. other than his height, nothing else is four about him. But um, I was surprised by everyone's <laughs> ages in the show. Nothing else is four about him. Continue, Andy. Oh, I just. <laughs> I don't know. Anything. All you had to say. I just. I really liked I liked how um we kept splicing the flashbacks, especially the one with the, Isabella, like when she jumped up on the wall, there was this shot where they showed her as a kid jumping up on the wall. And that is supposed to be like just how she gets up as, as an adult. And I really like shots like that. There's just some really cool way like visual storytelling here. They just kept it really concise at times. And I just really liked that. Um, I'd say my only disappointment with this finale is that there was not actually a lot of demons and i think that disappointed me I, I i'm not saying i want all the demons to kill all the kids but i kind of wanted the demons to kill some kids that's what i was that's what i was gonna say i want that <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay we'll talk about the demons that we did see and lack of demons yeah. i agree at that point uh april what did you think of the finale um i'm with michelle and i'm super yeah. high on this episode like i I don't really have too many, like, issues with it. I mean, obviously, some things didn't get, like, addressed that I really wish they would have. Um, But, like, in terms of a finale, like, everything felt very, for the most part, like, super, like, closed. And, like, it felt like a finale, but, like, a season finale. And left a lot that to, like, look forward to for the second season. Um, I also really enjoyed, like, cutting between the scenes of, like, Gilda Dawn and Emma's conversation with them, like, sort of executing, I guess, the plan as Ray's tell, or not Ray, but Emma's telling Ray how she made the decision or came to the conclusion that she wasn't going to take all of the kids. Um, I thought that was just like really brilliant um the music like never felt out of place and i won't even lie i like teared up for whatever reason whenever like they showed um like i really just enjoyed like them using like cutting between like the present and then like the past especially whenever it was like their training scenes versus like them actually executing them and i think that um that was really successful um in that because sometimes things like that can seem really like jarred and jagged but it sort of flowed very nicely like this is them practicing it and then also executing it at the same time and i love that like ray is sort of like taken aback the entire time like he like has has no idea what's going on but then like it's all like coming together and he's just like he it, it, it's just really like interesting to see ray in that because he's always seemed to like have a like an idea of what's going on and seemed like collected and i loved like the whole Is- isabella thing um no one even uh mentioned that isabella is ray's mom like actual yeah. mom yeah. so yeah. like yeah <laughs> good point so, That was uh, very interesting to, I guess, discover, too. Um, But I just, I did, like, I really enjoyed it. And, like, whenever they were, uh, like, Dawn throws the rock and, like, loops it around the tree. And they're, like, cutting between, like, them practicing it and, like, him actually doing it. Like, I honestly started to tear up. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is actually happening. Like, they're going to escape and no one's going to die. Like, I'm so happy right now. (laughs) Because deep down, I really did want them to escape no matter how many times I said like oh I want to see some kids die like that would make it interesting or it wouldn't surprise me and like it's also like great that the show could like given the fact that it's sort of like horror-esque and sort of like I don't know like scary um the fact that they could like get away with like essentially not really killing anybody that I mean we lost Norman but that's it like I just thought that was brilliant so I I'm I've if it's not like my favorite episode, it's like my second favorite of this entire season. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, April, you know who did die? Norman. And you know who's the only yep. one that was correct <laughs> about that is me. I'm did the only he, one that said Norman was dead. He's actually did dead. Did he actually die, though? No, as he, a, as a, he talked. 
In, in yeah, two, no, well, he's a ghost. So he's ghost is the here. thing is, so like, when I was reading the manga, I got so confused when he, like, pops up there, like, talking to Ray. I'm like, wait, what? Like, it's where did you come from? Back. Are you going to escape, too? And then when he disappears, it's like, oh, like, is he, like, a ghost or something? It was something? already confusing in the anime. I can't imagine. Oh, yeah. It was so yeah. confusing in the well, manga. I but like, it, I yeah. think it was really confusing, especially the first time um, in last episode, yeah. like, with, with Emma. And yeah. so... Like this time, whenever it happened, I was less surprised, um, or I guess like I less taken aback by it by the fact that like they're sort of like having this conversation and working through their thoughts with this like projection of Norman inside their heads. So I really liked that too. Like just kind of because uh, uh, what is it? Norman was sort of the person who like challenged Ray, and so like it makes sense that in a, in a moment where everything he's believed like is being challenged that Norman would show up and like the best part is whatever he's just like you don't have to have such a smug face about it like like because he already knows like how this imaginary conversation inside of his head is going to go out like play out so I love that that's yeah. really good point, I, I think yeah. the ghost ghost Norman's an effective device I think he needs to look real because it's needs to be more effective to the audience I never was like too confused by that but it's they certainly make no attempt to make him look ghost like oh anything. no yeah, yeah. Not at all. there's uh, no explanation like are you a ghost it's, you, you kind of get it, from their reactions being so chill that he's not yeah, really it's there just, it's, yeah. a devi- a devi- it's a <laughs> representation of Ray's head yeah um but uh uh, yeah, so I was right about Norman being dead. Uh, no one else believed me. I was like, Dylan, clearly he's not dead. We don't uh, no. know that he's no, dead. No, he, he clearly, Norman's still alive, but at don't, least he's dead April, until next April, year, April, right? don't he's give dead. him, don't give him this. Just don't, don't engage. <laughs> Look. Oh. Yeah, just don't engage. It's whatever. <laughs> Everyone Dylan. mocked me for my Norman's actually dead take, but, uh, look what happened. Did not come back. Okay. Um, so, yeah. We this, still have season two, just saying. Yeah, we do. We, yeah, so there's still time. <laughs> um, and I guess we'll focus on these characters. So that's, yeah, there's, there's hope for that. Um, this is a good finale. Uh, for sure. I think this is like a, a really great episode of the show. I, I mean, like the, the reason why I was so like has a uh, skeptical of the best episode claim is episode one is like so good. Episode one is like an all time best yeah. first episode of an anime. And I think like uh, if you're going to argue this is better than the Isabella stuff is like the main thing, because I think the, the Isabella flashback sequence in the second half, the, basically the last 10 minutes of this episode are so fantastic and kind of perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything there, like, is is maybe the best thing the show has done outside of the end reveal of last season of episode one. Maybe even better than that. Um, the the use of I want to talk to Andy about this. The use of music in the last ten minutes oh, yeah. is is one of the most notably prominent music cues interwoven into like uh, a specific part of a heavy part of an episode maybe I've ever seen. And I think it's done brilliantly. Um, just, it's, it just, it, it all like feels really incredible and it's like incredibly well executed. I'm certainly less high on the first half of the episode, which doesn't really feel finale like, um, but it's, it's still good. I, I like that you guys were like, like the intercutting and stuff. But if you do look at it, the first 15 minutes of this episode are really just, um, a description of what we did with the kids for and under and then yeah. uh getting like grappling to the other side of the wall um like i think there's definitely an argument of like i was expecting bigger things to happen in this finale in which children die um other than like <laughs> like throwing ropes to the other side of a wall like that's like the main action in this so i did like the the season never really got to the pace and action that we really thought it was gonna be and i think that could be a criticism i don't know i think like but- but but that being said, the least happens the very end of the episode. Not like the last ten minutes, nothing happens, but it's the best part. So I don't think it need yep. things need to be happening yeah. for it to be great. Um, that being said, I did find like the logistics part of this episode, kind of the first half, to be uh, definitely less good. Which is why, I'd, yeah, I'd still probably say it's the second best episode of the show, just because the Isabella stuff is so brilliant. And I, I think I understand what you're saying, Dylan. Like like I agree that like the beginning is not like finale ish. But what I really like about it is that it shows the difference between Norman and Emma. Because I think the show yeah. struggled yeah. with showing, like, that Norm, like, because Norman was just, like, the smartest person in the group. And, like, that was it. But I think what this showed is the real, because they said in the very beginning of the show that Norman's better at strategy and Emma's better at tactics. And I think this really shows how. Because Norman put out, put out this whole plan, but he didn't explain how to get it ready or anything. He just said, here's where how we're going to get across. But... Emma had to figure out all the details and she could direct kids to do specific things and keep them secretive about it the whole time. Like that's really impressive. I think. 
That's that, a, and, such a good point. And plus, and, like Gray was saying, like it's because Emma, they trust Emma. Emma is the one every kid trusts and the one that they would absolutely follow because she's so selfless and just like s- has such an opening personality. Nobody else could have pulled that off. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just really like Emma being the real main character in these last two episodes because it this, feels like Norman is almost the main character sometimes. Yeah. This is the best yeah. M episode of the show. It's, it's yes. Oh, yeah. They, she, it's incredible. Like, I just, for the screenshot options, I just posted four Emma screen caps for, for this one. Like, uh, she, she has so many great moments here and so many, uh, like, awesome uh, bad and stuff and uh she's yeah you see her in action here and all the all the kids and stuff i guess i guess the place i want to start is um this is like the so last episode was here's what's been happening the entire season that you didn't see like here's all the twists um and i think like last episode is very good and it's certainly very exciting to watch but it's also like oh okay i guess we're hiding all of this and this episode i think benefits from last episode getting all that out of the way like yeah. um this is like uh, the, but the problem is this first five minutes still do more of that um and it's better though because it's like okay now we know that uh we're, we're we were raided knew nothing and um, norman was directing stuff um and emma's executing on things and she had been for the past few months um but uh I, I kind of don't like this is more of a last episode commentary. I kind of don't ultimately like how this this season handled all the twist stuff. Um it felt like uh loaded at the end and uh didn't it wasn't like built up to, I don't know. Um it, it did answer most of our questions and then this episode um doesn't answer like maybe one or two things which I want to talk about, but uh we get the uh the resolution of like Phil and this question of like, are we taking everyone? Um, and then we get the resolution of the cliff and how we're getting over that. Um, so I think like in tandem, these last two episodes are like good at answering the, the build up to the season. I, I think there is that. And I think maybe the most important thing that we had gotten into is Isabella. And that is heavily, uh, g- that is heavily dived into by the show, by the episode at the end. So before yeah. we get into Isabella's. Stuff. So I just want to clarify. So what was it about the first 10 minutes that didn't work for you necessarily as much in terms as, of it, like feeling like a finale and feeling like a culmination of everything that had been being worked towards? Yeah, well, I mean, I think season. I think last episode answered the biggest things. And then um, which is fine. Sometimes shows a lot of the HBO shows, most notably have like the second to last as like the action packed. And then the last episodes, like the, the denouement and stuff like, but the, this, but, um, you know, the, the, I didn't, I don't know how much I needed to see like what happened to the babies and here's what's up with Phil. That to me didn't seem very important. Um, and then the logistics of we're training and we're getting over the wall. I think it's all good. I, I don't think it was like bad. And I do think you guys are great about it. It was really well presented, but it's just not that exciting. That would be my argument. I guess like the, my other takeaway from it is that, I mean, it kind of proves something that had not been clarified for the majority of the season also, because Emma has this plan. We're going to take everyone. Ray and Norman kind of both doubt that that is going to work and they want to have a smaller group. This really like crystallizes the idea that these, all of these kids, like they, they didn't turn against her. Like they, they went with her, they believed her, they put in the work and now they are all assets. Like this is a group activity. This isn't just Emma leading everyone else. Like she certainly is, but it's like, everyone's pulling their weight to make this happen. Multiple people do the rope thing. Like everyone takes turns. Like they are a capable like force to be reckoned with. And we really see that in action here. And that to me is like such a nice takeaway because this totally could have been like, Oh yeah, but they're not good at it. And then some of them died. And like, I guess, you know, only the smartest can pull it off. Like, no, like everyone did help out. And that's so great. And to me, like, it's just, it's nice to see, like, the the show clearly, like, we could have had, like, an epic demon fight and more people could have died. But, like, that's honestly not, like, what the heart of this show is. It's, like, a show about hope. It's a show about trying to work together, like, as corny as that sounds, to get out of a bad situation and try to find someplace better. And, like, to me, that's so uplifting and kind of nice in a show that's not, you know, afraid to murder people when they when they need to. So, like, to me, that's just such a good takeaway. Like, I'm so happy. Like, I I can't say that it's not good because, like, all of that stuff is just, like, so what I want right now. So, 
Yeah, like I get what you're saying, but like to me, like I think it's it's kind of wonderful. Certainly well presented. I think it's interesting you said that's not what the show is about. I feel like I didn't know what the show was about. Until yeah, this, the last is, like, I know. No, this is like when you get right. right. It's like oh well, they didn't die. Like they this was focused just on how well they were able to execute the escape, and they achieved it. It gave them that. Yeah. So like so now, it's like now yeah, I agree like, with okay, you that the show isn't is about demon attacks, is. but I thought we were leading yeah. to demon attacks. So it's first yeah. of all we have to get over exactly. that exactly, <laughs> which is why it's such a nice surprise to me. I feel because it's like oh wow, like. No, they're they're okay for now. Like maybe they can actually pull this off, and like that's way more uplifting than I expected. But like I'm here for it. But so, I think. Go ahead. With that said, I think that maybe the show is, I don't know, mis. I don't think misadvertised. I think it's too going too far. But it's like it feels like the first episode's like kind of tonally a different show at this point because it's just so. It's not. Like, and I don't think it's bad. I think the show bridges to the finale. Great. It's just that, like, the beginning and end are kind of just completely different tonally. This episode lacks the horror elements <laughs> yeah. that made episode one shine, for sure. Um, and even the, the, the horror elements we sometimes got, like, in and the middle. That, the horror elements were interspersed throughout, and then yeah. it, we kind of abandoned them at the in the finale, which is okay, maybe. But uh, there, there's, like, one moment with Isabella showing up that they try to present as, like, a horror shock thing. But it, it's never really a, a big threat, yeah. interestingly. Um but yeah, I mean, that, that's like, I think the show, we thought this was like the horror, like, it was turning into a horror show. And I think this, that, this finale is like, no, it's not. It's just, uh, uh, it's it like maybe like a show about like kids and surviving and hope and it has horror elements to it. So, um, that's definitely a twist from where I think most of us assume this was leading up to, which is not necessarily inherently a bad thing, but, um, at the very least, it's going to be a little jarring at first. So maybe we need to sit on it more. I do think that, the, I do think that this, these last two episodes are really good at justifying all of the talk about we bringing everyone. Uh, we got to mm-hmm. have everyone to come. That was like a lot of that. We do really, uh, end that well because we, we, we figure out who we're bringing and we show everyone doing stuff. I agree. It's like cool to see everyone do their part. The issue is I don't care about any of them. I think that's my main. You don't know uh, them yet. That's just the thing. You don't know who they are. Right. But it's a season finale. If it, this, this episode features a lot of black haired kid and yellow haired kid. Um, and I don't care about them, but uh, they, they launch bottle rockets. That was really weird. Um, you should care about them because Emma cares about them. Yeah. I, so yeah. I do care. I do get that part, and I do think the episode was good with that. But um, I, it, I think this maybe too much of this is uh, invested in minor characters that we never, outside of Phil, Don, and Gilda, I don't know or care about any of these people. Um, so I don't know. Should the show have spent a little bit more time? Um, it, it, it's that being said, it didn't focus on any of them. It did focus on our main characters' reaction to them. There's just a lot of them in this episode. Um, but at the very least, it, it does do a good job of um, concluding, like, who we're taking. And then the flashback last episode to, like, Norman and Emma talking by the sheets, like, pretty early on about we need to tell more of them um, and them being, like, capable of handling it. That is really fulfilling, I think, to watch and the reveal of that. That's, that's like, maybe my favorite part of the reveals, these two episodes, is, like, we actually did tell everyone and uh, everyone is is mature enough to handle it and um, they're all on board. That, that that That's, like, the most hopeful part, I think, of everything here. I, um, I disagree. I think the most hopeful part is the part with Ray later. Like, I think that's like the part where like, right. So the, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess that's the yeah. biggest. Uh, so Ray is like given up and planning on killing himself for the past uh, six years, which yeah. is so depressing. And then uh, he has to, and then Norman and Emma like strategize around him. And then uh, we, he like eventually gives in and says, okay, I'll, I'll not yeah. try to die. Yeah. It's, well, it's no, well I think the moment where he like helps that girl cross the yeah. chasm. Like, I think that's, I the, think that's like, supposed to be like the culmination of yeah. his like character arc. Is and I, right. him he's helping taking that care of somebody else. Like yeah. the way Emma, he's seeing them the way Emma finally has been. He's like, Oh yeah. Like, no, yeah. I don't, I don't know you super well, but you deserve to live. Come with me. We'll go together. Yeah. And I, I, I and I don't know. It it just feels very genuine this way it happens because I think a lot of times characters in shows will have breakthroughs and it will and, and breakthroughs can be sudden like this, but they don't feel earned. And this definitely feels like it was earned because Ray spends this episode and the previous episode just kind of at the end of the previous episode just kind of solemnly thinking about stuff and just kind of in shock and he's just kind of processing and and then so this breakthrough kind of feels right because he spent so long just sitting there not really talking and he's like okay i understand now this is how i feel and i really like that they they, they let him have time to think before just suddenly being a little bit different 
in some yeah. way. I, th- I think Ray's mm-hmm. definitely ends up as the best character of the show. Yeah. Um, he's he, like, he's the most thing. So that's, that's not, I don't think that's that hot of a take. Like almost every reveal the last few episodes has to do with Ray. Um, he's like the most plot revolving around him. He's the clearest emotional arc. Um, I think my only complaint would be that uh, large parts of what he ends up going through are reveals towards the end. So we don't like have the full picture of him until right now. Like it's such a key part, like la- what's revealed last episode that he's had this plan and that he's been um, yeah. planning on setting himself on fire. And um, it, and then this and then you don't know until the end of this episode that he's uh, bi- mom's biological son. So that they, these are like key parts to his. But they but I think what's good is they fit in with what we're already getting from him. Yeah. Uh, like uh, his are we're already talking about i already spent like two podcasts ago saying like ray's the best character and the and these just fit in with like the the best things yeah. we were getting and uh, and they did seed a lot of little things like they don't make sense without knowing the full picture but it's cool like he's humming in a previous episode yeah, yeah they, they handled yeah. the humming very well that yeah. didn't that didn't really stand out to me too much but it's like why are they focusing on that too much and it's like oh that's why they're focusing on it so that was good. yeah I thought that was really good yeah and um, and I like that they let it in the first episode of the sh- they, they, she had her humming in the first episode like that makes sense now yeah, oh, I want to oh, go back yeah. and watch that. She, okay. She's humming with Connie. Yeah, okay. she hum- and oh, Connie yeah. says, I've never heard you, like, sing that before or something like that. Like, this has been a, a seed from the very start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess, ke- keeping with Ray, since we're already talking about this, the, the big twist of the episode is that, uh, we, we learned before that all the moms, I guess, get pregnant actually once before they become moms. And we see that Ray was Isabella's biological kid and that they, they realized this at some point. Um, I think this really ties together all the Isabella and Ray stuff really well. Um, because yeah. it's like, uh, th- this justifies the dumb Ray memory gimmick. Um, like this is in service of something larger and him realizing that through the song, um, and that connecting the two of them, they had the, the scenes together the entire time. It's like, why, you know, why is Ray the informant? What's with their, their dynamic here? Um, this is going to make me look back a lot more fondly on a lot of these scenes, uh, between yeah. the two of them here. And I think it also makes a lot more sense. Um, cause there was that note, the secret Isabella's weakness is that, Ray is her son. son. And it makes sense now why Crone reacted the way she did when she read that. Like, Mm. it's like why she was so like whoa yeah okay if that yeah I do I agree that's the intent I'm bothered by the handling of that then because that wasn't relevant yeah it doesn't seem I think they could have handled a lot of like hidden information we never see the note turned around we never see it was on it we don't know we don't why do the character it doesn't end up mattering yeah that's frustrating I I think the issue with the show is that there's a lot of hidden information from the audience and sometimes it works really well and other times they just don't know when to tell us no, stuff. No, the show, the show is hiding so much and over 50% of it does not matter. Some of it's really good. The show has some really good twists, but like the end of the first episode, fantastic twist. This, the twist with Ray and mom at the end of this episode, fantastic. I'm glad we hid that. But like the, the, the Isabella's weakness, the pen. I don't even. We could get into that. Everything with the <laughs> okay, tracking they took devices. The pen thing. with them. It, the show got did a they? second season. Yes, they did. Yeah, she and was I holding it in her hand, hand yeah. and then she and looked at it decisively, and then she the, said, "Bring yeah. Phil in." So, like, the, clearly, it's a part of her plan. The, the box yeah. ended up just being to like stuff the 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 room, and, but she still got the radio out anyway. None of it mattered. And That's then, so and frustrating. Then like, there was Molotov that. Like, that didn't that matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was waiting all episode for the Molotovs to show up, and they did. They just did it. The show. We the show is too them. aggressive with we the, the hidden information. Yeah. Well, see, and that's the thing, though, too, because the Molotovs were part of Ray's plan, but they're not yeah. like they weren't acting off of Ray's plan. They were acting uh, off of their sense. own. But, they, but uh-huh. those are Chekhov's gun. Like if you mentioned you Molotovs, should just, I you just, just didn't mention. Yeah, just don't it's mention. It's a red herring. Just gotta yeah. get over it. Because again, I mean, they I'm, weren't I'm over doing it, but don't, 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 we don't need it. Um, yeah, yeah I, 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 I get that. I get that. Don't mention fire to me if you're not going to give me more fire. Fire. We, uh, we so have <laughs> was already <laughs> burning. Yeah. Do we want more fire? Do, should they burn down the bridge? Is that? Uh, they were, they said they're going to burn the forest, and then they did it, and I'm sad. <laughs> when did they say they're going to burn the forest? That's a big was. forest. Yeah, well, Ray was just was. feeling emotional. He's okay now. Okay, since we did, since we're on the subject again, uh, let what what the pen is the big thing that doesn't get revealed so they bring it with them so that's not answered right? yeah um okay mm-hmm. um that's that's stupid uh it's okay. not it's so yeah, stupid it, it, it kind it's of so is. stupid you i'm not gonna learn that answer for a year it. no it's, yeah it's, i didn't care about the pen to start it's with the show right it's forcing me to care about the stupid pen it's not gonna pay off well who cares what, no, what could this pen possibly be? That with any certainty, oh, I'm I think certain. you're being a little harsh no, 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 on the no, no, pen. No. like a secret compartment inside Dylan, of the pen Dylan, or Dylan, a I note. Dylan, I figured it out. Yeah, what's the, the pen? pen? 
is the semen we were talking about previously. I know, episode. right? Is yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it is. Oh my god, it's the semen to raise father. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Mm. It's been preserved perfectly for twelve years. <laughs> In, inside the pen. Okay, that makes sense. Another thing. So here's another big question I had. Um, what happened to the device Ray made to remove the tracker? The tracker. Yeah, it didn't matter at all. No one used it. They just cut off their ears, right? They didn't use the device. Well, no, only Emma yeah. and Ray cut off their ears. Yeah. No, I think they all did because no, 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 no. Because only, on the track, the I think all the other kids used the the thing, but they didn't show it. And did only... they? Yeah. Yeah. Why did we see that? Okay, when she looks at the tracker, you see that blob. It's all the other four-year-olds, and you see them immediately run to her. So then you make that connection. And I that did not make that okay, that's all the other kids. Oh, these babies cut off their ears. I was. They cut, I don't think they cut off their ears. I think we would have seen that. But uh, they, yeah, no. They, they, I think they right, right. Time they did so much in that episode, but they did definitely cut off their ears. Yeah, you're saying in the manga they cut off their ears. Yes, all the kids, a- every the kid. Kids? Yeah to be tracked like are you kidding me that's like the f- what, why didn't they use the taser thing How, are you are you making this up or is this in the manga that they all cut off their ears except for except we saw emma and ray for sure cut off their ears but everyone else yeah. so, Did they so, like, have to have? well no, no 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 michelle michelle so don and gilda cut off their ears they didn't use the 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 like taser is, thing? is the does the device just cut off their ears is that what the device does <laughs> It's yeah, just that's a yeah. high tech laser for yeah, slicing off I'm ears. I'm pretty sure that's what they use. I think they all use Ray's device. That's so stupid. Well, <laughs> or maybe the other thing too is maybe they didn't do it like immediately. So, so when I saw the dots on the thing, I was like, okay, that could be the kids in the forest. It could be the four year olds. Maybe they're in the same direction. I mean, like, who could like whatever? I well, mean, no, I, because remember they're e- together. Like that's what I thought. It was just a heap of ears that looked like kids. <laughs> Because they would have assumed well, that they were all together. The other so, thing too is are that the ears remember with the four year olds? Like the, Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. Them. Is there each four year old holding an ear? There's like a, a pile of ears in the in the middle yeah. of a group of children. But I just buried <laughs> them underneath the tree. Oh Wait, god. Like, why why can, did the, the show <laughs> focus so much on this device and we didn't see any of it and how any of this happens? We didn't need to. I <laughs> needed to. I'm so yelling oh. about it. Clearly I needed to. Now I'm imagining like a baby like like sucking on it, uh, like a like an ear, like it's a power. Oh, why? <laughs> I mean, they're four. They're not stupid. I mean, I, mean, like, I, g- I guess in the end, like two of them, Emma and Ray, have their ears off. They're the only ones that matter. The device, like they yes. ultimately that got rid of the trackers. So I guess it very, very like loosely at top level doesn't matter. But we saw none of the middle. I feel like we saw. I, a little, yeah. Okay, did you okay. Really want like an extended two minute sequence of everyone taking the time to yes. cut their? Yes. I, 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 Michelle, like that would have been they're helping them i'd rather have that than the five minute sequence on debating what to do with the four-year-olds like i thought that was less important than the years that's super important I because that was a really good yeah. th- because okay. that's the the importance behind like that conversation is because the entire season emma has been so like 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 her her sole motivation is to get all of the kids out and for her to even like sit there and like debate to not bring all of the kids is like really, really big and huge because again, from the beginning, she's been, we're taking everybody, we're taking everybody. And then she's actually like sitting there having a very serious conversation and saying, okay, but do we take everybody? Because now she doesn't know anymore. And I think the other thing too, is that her decision to like, it's very smart and like, just another like display as to like how like clever and like that she can be because okay so we have all of the five year olds but like the four year olds are protected for at the you know a minimum of two years because yep. she knows that they don't ship kids out until they're six and so like that's really really smart because if you're going to leave behind like people she's at least like secured them for or I say secured but like she she like has protected them for another two years. So, and then that also gives her like purpose. So she has two years to figure out how she's going to one, come back to get those kids. And then I guess we can also try and save the kids in the other plants, but more importantly, yeah. like, so like, it's like that protection that she's given, not just those kids, but herself as well, because she said she's going to get everyone out. And so she's not, she's going to just not immediately. Look, yeah, I, I got all that from. April's a hundred percent. Right. That's yeah. why you don't cut the kid thing and you don't need the ears because one is it. 
astronomically <laughs> more Michelle? important to the what? plot than the <laughs> no, other. No, no, the ears are very. I, that's I. No, I agree. Not. I agree that no, the, what not. we're doing with the kids is important, but the show told me that the ears yeah. are important because we spent a lot. Of, I, I personally do not care that much about ears. I guess I haven't really thought about it that much. Apparently, you do. <laughs> Dylan, cut. okay, let me say this in a different way. We saw an ear. We saw Emma's ear in a bucket. They were hoping that you, as a viewer, could make that mental connection of, oh, look, she used the device to cut off her ear. She and there's the ear. Showed us, no, she yeah, had a scalpel she looks, on the, in the she, sink. Yeah, I, looks, actually, I actually she, don't think she, she used the, the device. The, I got she that looks at the sink. She sees the tracker. She goes over to the bucket. There. There's the ear, and you assume that's what everyone else did. That's as much as you needed. There's the mental connection. No, I, but I don't, I don't think I also, she used the I device, I also though. assumed, I also just... assumed that she, she, uh, like she may have passed the device off to everyone else, whether yeah, it's to yeah, cut the ears off time. or whatever. She passed it off to the the majority of the group yeah, that, that because might, that it's one of those like taking taking an ear for the team kind of situation. So. <laughs> Like she's like, that, okay, no, if that I normal, can that safely, normal type of situation. if I can safely yeah. remove everyone else's tracker device or cutting off their ears or whatever, versus like me having to use a scalpel, like I, I think that would be more beneficial because then she only has to worry about her and Ray, I, I guess, potentially bleeding to death. Versus yeah. like the whole entirety, like right. the whole that, group. That, that 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 checks out to me. If Emma and Ray cut theirs up, and the rest of the kids use the device, that's which doesn't that's what I had assumed. Yeah. Because I yeah, assume, sure. Let's go. Or maybe, Ray, or maybe the device. I, I, don't know, Michelle, I don't know if you don't know that so you're like hiding spoilers here. I'm not kidding. So. I really don't spoilers. know. I don't. I don't remember like who uses which thing to cut off their ears but like some of them definitely use the tracker maybe not all but it got it sure went around but the thing is okay okay the point is that emma and ray cut off their ears to trick mom and the way the yes. rest of the kids did it it doesn't it's un- matter it's unclear and it doesn't matter exactly okay. Okay, anyway. it doesn't matter so we need to not talk about this anymore right. um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, think, I, I agree though that we should have shown like more crazy stuff because like this show i bought into this show because it was so messed up and so creepy and like i think when they lean into that it's better like show me the kid these young kids having to cut off their ears a little bit more the, like the ears thing was a part of the horror elements that yeah. the show kept doing and we got none of that this episode yeah well yeah like and i think that's I think this show, like, you can have a hopeful message, but I think the show needs to lean a little bit more heavily into these dark ideas sometimes, more than it is already. Um, well, then you should definitely read the manga because there's more well, there. Season two. Okay, season two. Um, You're never going to get all the horror from the show, even. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you want to really dig deep, you you got to go to the source. No, I think this. I think season two is just going to be constant kids dying, Michelle. I think they're going to pivot. I think, yep. I think that's what's it's happening. I think they're going to die, but it's going to be from like them trying I mean, to into trees. Yeah, it, it's it's, be so they're just going to starve to death now. Oh no, it's going to be like survival Probably. show. Have you seen a single squirrel in the show? <laughs> Where are the animals? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or a bunny rabbit. Yeah. That's okay. True. Um. I. I kind. I was planning on digging into Phil a little bit. I don't. We don't. Know. We, we don't have time. Okay. So we're, we're moving on what? from Phil. What? No. 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 Get okay. Me. Okay. April was right though. Phil is important because he is that two-year time clock for Emma. He is what they need Phil's to go the back leader, for. The leader of the kids that have, are staying. Yeah, that's Phil's purpose. Okay. Well, clear objective. Phil is what a really really eloquent four-year-old he is he's very smart he could be the smartest kid that grace field has ever seen as far as we know and that check out because they're known for producing high quality brains he's not he's not four um but i think phil i still think he's a demon (laughs) yeah no no no. there's still i'm still on watch out for phil phil being a demon in disguise makes more sense than him being four years old yeah, <laughs> like that's the uh, anyway. I, I, the show like spent too much time on Phil. If this is his conclusion, but I guess he's still important. Um, I agree, but I think that what's important about Phil is that he's like, like it's his job to take the place of Emma. Yeah, and I, so yeah. they and that's what she needed. And so and and I I agree that there was like probably throughout the entirety of the show there was a little bit too much Phil, but like. I think this in the end makes sense because she has to leave behind, I guess, a legacy or something. But also she pointed out that Phil isn't like the oldest one of them either. 
So of the four year olds that's being left behind, like there's one, there's yeah. at least one other that's older so he's, than he's him. He's not even the oldest four year old. Makes less no. sense. No, that makes I, I, no, it makes, it makes total sense he is the most well equipped to handle the information that she gave him and that's why he's replacing emma he's the only one who knows about the demons yeah, and yeah, about I, what I, really I, happens i think we're arguing there because, I just, I think, yeah. if she left it in the hands of the oldest person then if people out yeah. immediately then then like they're all screwed I got, yeah. I got i got that from the exactly. episode I'm, I'm just saying he's uh he sounds I, older than i, I think the bigger thing is that Phil stuff in this episode doesn't pay off the really creepy ending of last episode. Like uh, I they think did, they did, they did two I, separate Phil I cliffhangers, feel, which neither I were important. Really yeah. bad that Steve was hyping up Phil. This is literally like why Phil's important. Okay, like this is it. Like the end. Phil, Phil, Phil I do think this is an interesting ending for yeah. Phil. He's future yeah. Emma. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, ne- we did we, so Isabella after we do all the Phil stuff, uh, and also it's a great moment when Phil's like, yeah, I'll, st- I'll, I'll stay behind. Um, like that, that's, that's very good, brave of him too. Yeah, what a brave like four year old with you. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. die. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. After that, Isabella sounds the alarm, and this is the only demons we get from the episode. It's uh, we get as demon commander, demon soldiers telling them to round up the kids don't kill the high quality ones or uh don't yeah kill everyone else but not the high quality ones and don't damage their heads that's what all the demons are saying um yep. so i guess we get one demon late in the isabella stuff but um this was cool to see all these demons uh yeah. i don't know where they were other than this in the season i still they're don't hiding in the shadows to oh my God, they explain that they explained that before they said that so the whole point of the farms is that these kids can lead, lead michelle, like michelle, michelle i understand the literal <laughs> plot I, under, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. we all get the literal yeah. I, I get the plot i'm criticizing so it i'm of, criticizing like, the, the plot point, they don't want to scare the kids so that they can eat them and it would be better to eat the them j- when they're the not j- the jig is up at the point i think so we uh that's why they send the soldiers up but no i'm, I'm just making it like uh it would have been a more exciting narrative had we seen more demons i think we made that point um but i did like this segment that we got uh w- with them still a lot of questions with the demon including who him is who the, the the what the teferi the council um is and uh everything else <laughs> involving the demons so that, that's all up there up for season two so that's exciting um we so th- then we get the 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 cliff crossing segment um this is back to norman's plan for emma and it's like don't actually cross at the bridge cross the cross the cliff um which they can do via like a zip line and uh i think this i, th- I was fine with this i think this checks out um i was i, I feel like it. i was advocating that we could have gotten over the cliff so i was happy with this um i agree that they really interspersed stuff really well with the training what we were doing the two months and um we uh, Don throwing the thing and we get like uh, him practicing shift to him actually throwing it. That's cool. We do these bottle rockets. That's weird. And then you get the ghost of Norman and then Isabella shows up. So there you go. Any other comments on any of the, the cliff crossing stuff there? No, except that I just great. felt so triumphant. Me too. <laughs> it's a good moment. It We're was. Doing it. We're, and yeah, I think the end, I feel like that's when I felt most triumphant was the end, but yeah. this is, this is good. Yeah um and ray yeah, ray crosses uh isabella goes after the kids and then she, she's there she's on top of the wall and emma they're facing off for a second but then emma goes goes across and they cut the lines um i with, loved that scene like that was a good scene like there was no need for words like emma says goodbye mom and she says don't go emma and then emma just leaves and like and then like just that like su- like super wide shot of her standing on the the edge of the wall and then like you see like the lines go slack and like blowing in the wind i thought that was beautiful i and, loved that scene and isabella I really like- seemed like helpless here i think yeah. Like, yeah this is not the imitating isabella we got in I, the last few episodes i just like how all the sound effects kind of like go away other than mom's breathing in the wind and we just hear her like panting ca- trying to mm-hmm. catch her breath and then all we hear after that is just this like the wind in the actual like uh lines they made like blowing and it was just i don't know i just really liked the sound design for this ending right here yeah i I really want to praise the sound design the sound editing the music especially for this finale i think that's what stands out to me the most production wise because um that and then i want to get into once we start the isabella flashback we start hearing uh leslie song this boy that we meet and this song oh, uh, permeate, perme, per, permeates throughout the entire rest of the episode. Yeah. Um, yep. 
and it's the, and it's a theme we've been hearing in the music like through the entire show. Like this is not the first mm-hmm, time we've heard this mm-hmm. song played by the like band in the background. Yeah, we transition into an orchestral version of Leslie's theme. So we first we do the him him playing it on the yeah. w- whatever instrument, right? And uh, it's it's then uh, it turns into this orchestral version as soon as she's shipped off in the flashback, and then like it turns into like this. Uh, like I don't know how to describe it, like a chanting ver a muted chanting, like a yeah. like a prayer type yeah. version of it. Um and then back into the orchestral version as they're like running through the forest at the end of the episode. Um but it's still the same like notes and the same theme, I think, it's, throughout all of that. Yeah, it's the same melody, but it jumps around into different keys sometimes and different instruments, and it's interesting to listen to. I, I feel like this is like the most striking use of this type of device that I've seen in any of our shows. Just like the same thing repeated throughout the entire end of a season like that's so striking and so such an importance for music that um in like it's it's like plot like music but it's like clearly derived from the plot and um that that yeah it's just it's it's so striking and i feel like unprecedented for for what we're doing like i clearly like we do this you could do a type of thing where you transition from a thing that they're playing into a the thing but this is like derived from the plot like 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 the the song and hearing the song is what the twist arises from and it uses that as the back and then it transitions to using that as the music in the show uh it's kind of meta to an and then it's It's the narrative of the literal music that's what it is the song itself has a narrative that changes over the course of the season and and like I'm, i'm not joking when i say this this is like this is like um show not tell like they're letting us derive yeah. meaning mm-hmm. from what's happening on screen and that includes the music it, it, it's it's listening but it is show not tell it's really interesting to watch and the best comparison i made like i i sat on this for a little bit it really reminds me of the ending of la la land where the music just takes like the front mm. stage and we just watch all these things go past us and you just kind of have to understand the emotions the music is trying to get across to you and how that it goes along with the the pictures that are going along with the music like it just really doesn't hold your hand through a lot of this it really just lets you make your own connections and i like that a lot i love comparing that to the end of la la land that's really interesting um uh, yeah yeah the the the, the, the similar i think montage type things i feel like um with okay i yeah this is my favorite part of the finale like i like the isabella stuff in general but if i had to pinpoint an element i think like what we're doing here with with this with the Le- Leslie's song and he's playing. Let's go through the flashback. Um, so we get young Isabella. It's, we, we saw like episode like seven or whatever forever ago, the crone death episode, this flash, mm-hmm. uh, this flashback of grandma with a girl. And we were like, is that Isabella? Yes, it's Isabella. And, um, she's, uh, we see her like, uh, meet this, this boy, Leslie. Another element I love about this, Leslie is like manic pixie dream boy. Like, he's like no personality. <laughs> this is always a girl in this type of thing, right? Like, this is, this is, this is always like a girl love, love interest for a kid. And he's just this, this boy that doesn't have a personality. He's like playing music. Um, he's adorable. He's and embarrassed yeah. by his music. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's a manic pixie dream boy because he, I mean, he's he's just treated the way so many girl love interests are that like their entire purpose is to die for the plot to happen. Yeah, and he dies for the plot for the for the the, yeah exactly thing. But that is like a love interest thing. That's like like, you know it's it's kind of reversal. I actually yeah. think it's very feminist. Um, yeah. It, yeah. The, what, the way, Isabella is like the, the main character of the end. Like Isabella and, uh, Emma ends up being the main characters of, of the season. It's, it's actually, a, I mean, I think like a lot revolves around Ray also and, and Norman, but, um, you know, I, I, th- I think I'd call the season a promised Neverland feminist. I think, and that, I, that, I think I like the ending too. Cause like th- th- this flashback too, specifically because it shows that there's, it almost, it, it almost implies that Isabella is a lot like Emma in the past but she didn't have Absolutely. she didn't yeah. have norman and ray though with her for help right, so she right. just fell back on just becoming a mom and i find right, that so, interesting. so well, right, her, so her situation was different from like like emma's and isabella's were obviously different situations and so i think there's a lot to kind of be said about that too because you could almost draw like an image that you know if emma hadn't found out before like the offer was made to her that she would be almost kind of in like it would end up being almost the same so that's a great point because we see Isabella doesn't get on that wall till winter and that's after Leslie's already shipped out if she had found that wall to begin with when he was still around maybe they would have tried to concoct a plan to escape but by then she was already alone 
Yeah, yeah. she do. <clears throat> and and yeah, I think she... it also helps drive home the point that, like, that sort of, like, Emma uh, wanting to take everyone versus Ray only wanting to take their small group because, like, it's one of those, like, there's strength in numbers kind of thing. And if you try and mm-hmm. go at it alone, then you're more than likely going to fail. Whereas, like, if you take your family with you, then there's almost a better chance to succeed, especially given that, the like, all of these kids are extremely smart and clever and all of that. And that's yeah. how Ray, like, comes around, too. He's like, I had been seeing all these people as a burden, but, like, oh, my God, like, no, they're super capable, and they're doing just fine. And they're actually assets to the team now. They're not going to be, they're not going to have to just, like, keep watch to make sure they don't mess up. Like, they're going to actively contribute. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point that uh, Isabella doesn't have anyone here because she, fi- she fi- finds the top of the wall after uh, he's... Uh, or I guess before, but um, th- th- he's soon shipped out after. Um, so we get the montage of uh, Leslie playing the song, and then uh, no, 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 then he's shipped out, and then Isabella's sad, so she goes to the top of the wall, and then yeah, we get exactly. this yeah. this recurring yeah. image of the hand reaching out towards her um, with uh, current our current grandma, I believe, although it's our ambiguously presented yeah, in this she's episode. Still a grandma, yeah. just she's older still grandma. Well, so there's two grandmas in this episode. There's uh, a. <laughs> The gra- pre- I, my interpretation is that grandma that we meet earlier this season is the mom of Isabella's house here. Yeah. And then we also see a grandma with the demon when Isabella is offered momhood, but it's different people, I was pretty sure. So I think that's the previous grandma that we see. Um, and it, and our current grandma was Isabella's mom of the house. Um, no, I'm pretty sure that's not true. Like, okay, I don't think we need to get yeah. into all that because the show is unclear. I don't know if we want to. It's it's, ex- so it's extremely vague. We don't see any of their faces, but uh, definitely two different people in that scene when she's shipped off. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I, that that fits in line with the flashback thing because we were like, oh, Grandma was previously the mom of Isabella's house. Like that that would fit with that. But yeah, the show doesn't feel the need to make it too clear. I don't think it's that important. The important thing is the thematic hand reaching out. Like Isabella is offered these mm-hmm. lifelines to mm-hmm. survival, and she's just taking. Them. Them. it's kind of we're kind of absolving her i feel like throughout her life here like um eh, i mean i don't know if we're abs- like she's still like you know she's a part of this terrible system but it it, yeah. it, it does a much better and it, it it clearly cares a lot more about ch- trying to give her nuance than it ever yeah. did with sister crone <laughs> which is unfortunate but you really do get the essence of you know her whole thing and again we don't get the eternal monologue stuff but in the manga, there is this whole thing where she says, like, I have no regrets. Like, after all, this was the path I chose for myself. I can't change the world. What would my death do? If anything, I need to make the best of what I have. I must provide all the love inside me. I must let, like, the kids live as long as possible. These children know nothing. He's no longer around. I must live for myself and give purpose to this life. So, like, basically, like, the thing that I find so interesting about um Isabella is that like she is a lot like Emma and the thing is like for her she she didn't have you know maybe the same opportunities to escape or like this whole team that Emma did but also she she just she eventually did fall into this system that you know it's terrible it offers her a place that's better than death but like at the cost of what seeing children murdered all the time having to ship them off whereas Emma's like no like I'd rather change the world than have that be my crust of bread, you know? And that's, like, so interesting to me. It's like Emma's, like, willing to take on the entire system and dismantle it. And Isabella's a case of, like, yeah, well, like, she has nuance and it's really tragic. And you see her perspective and she is trying to make the most of what she has and, like, kind of give the kids a good life in a twisted way. But... Emma's like, no, like, that's terrible. That's not enough. We deserve better. And that's like a way bigger deal, which I think is super cool. That Those are so juxtaposed throughout the season. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. that's that's a great assessment. of the show. Michelle, I feel like what this episode did with Isabella was what you were upset the yeah. show didn't do with Crone. Like, I feel like the hand <laughs> reaching out is everything you talked about with the Crone. Yeah, thing. the manga, like honestly doesn't do sister crone like amazing but definitely cares more about fleshing out isabella i think the thing that's like sad about crone in particular is like she she was an opportunity for isabella to have someone else on her side again you know like she was close to leslie leslie died and then she just like never had anyone ever again who was like a friend or a confidant sister crone offered her that and she took she would not 
go for it because, you know, these girls are just pitted against each other once they go into the, the system to become mothers. And that's like, what's so tragic to me about Crone in a way. Um, and just, but yeah, Isabella, like it is, it is really sad. And like, you do kind of feel for her, but again, like she, she's helping that system and she still has those kids as four year olds. She's still going to ship them out when they're old enough. That's still very much her plan. Unless the, the demons kill her for doing a bad job, which they very well might do. Cause she lost like 15 kids. It's, it's pretty bad for your mom. Yeah. Yeah. I want to so, talk yeah. about Isabella's uh, state in the present here. Cause we'll go back to the flashback, but she's, um, she ends up, uh, she says she's lost. Uh, at the end of the flashback, Ray asks, like, why did you give birth to me? And she said, for survival. And she said she's lost. She, like, says good luck to all the kids. And then she goes back to Phil, says they escaped. So I guess she sussed out that Phil was in on it. Um, yeah. And um, tends to the babies. And she's just like, good. So... I had I was interested if I, I'm interested to see if any of the, uh, you all thought this. So when Isabella at the flashback ended, I was convinced that she was going to hang herself. I was yes. too, and I was like, yes. I, um, me too. Like, yeah, the rope. I'm like, oh, was, don't there's do f- that. ropes floating. Oh, it would have been so that. poetic. The ropes they used to not, escape, they were just floating there. Easy and dumb. No, I, I thought it would have been so emotional. Really, really well like, done. She, she lost. She said she lost her entire, like, she's failing. She, the so demons would kill her okay. anyway. Like, that would have been, I, I was so sure that's where that was going. Yeah. Um, that's, and I think it's kind of interesting that they didn't do that because I guess that was the expectation. But yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I mean, they I set it think, up so well. One, one thing I will say um, about, like, this being good is that I like that it still doesn't pin down mom is being good or bad i don't exactly. think and i really yeah. like that it keeps if her if she committed suicide it would have been like oh she's a martyr no she's not yeah. a martyr she she did bad stuff and she's still gonna do bad yeah, stuff this is more interesting still moving part forward. Of that yeah. System. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 she still and, and could like, be a player and and also i didn't really read it as she was letting them all go it felt more like she was letting ray go and it it, it I don't know. It, it just came across as a lot more selfish, and I like that because it makes for a better character. Yeah, more. I mean, I don't think she yeah. let them go. I just think she's like, uh, once she it's out of her control, she says, them. I do hope yeah. you survive. Yeah, like, yeah. what, what yeah. could she have done at yeah. that point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I just like that. I, she could have I, I tried like jumping complexity. across. Maybe, been. but I think the other thing, too, is that, like, <laughs> for whatever motivation, it was important for her to get back to the kids that were still alive. That does fit with her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think but so. Like, it does, it, 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 I was gonna say, even in, within that action, it doesn't necessarily make her like a good or a bad person. You can interpret her going back to the kids that were still there, who are four years and under, as either way. Like either she's doing it because she genuinely cares about those kids, or she's doing it because she understands that she still has a role to play in the society, yeah. and that's yeah. to protect like the the farm. I guess. Yeah. So, uh, but either so, way. Whether sure. she's doing it from like a place of like goodness or badness, it's still an ominous scene of like this woman walking like with a burning house behind her and like yeah. looking over these kids that she's essentially raising as cattle. Like either way, this is like it really doesn't paint her in a good picture, but that's really great. I just like that we did it like redeem her like unquestionably. Well, totally. That's exactly why I'm saying like it would have been so cliche if she hung herself because yeah. then it's like her story's over. She's absolved of like and no. And the thing is like she goes back to the kids. I would say like my this is my perspective but definitely because that's her last card she has because it, without them they would definitely kill her because she would have lost everyone but if she at least kept these kids and she could prove maybe to grandma they're like oh it was out of my control they outsmarted me which is kind of all true i mean they did outsmart her and i think if she, she can, can tell them that the, they're, they're all alive survive. right that's yeah. important it, too yeah. and this is like the the whole like getting back to like emma versus isabel like it's like a generational kind of shift in perspective right because isabel is like this is one of the smartest people from the farm. She gets recruited to be a mom. She gets to be a mom, the best farm. And she has Ray. And she says it's because she wants to survive. She wants to live longer than anybody else. And the best way to ensure like the most freedom she can in that system is to be the mom of this farm. So that, that's what she does. And she does it great. And yeah, Emma's so- like, I don't want to just survive. I want to be like free. Which is like yeah. the next step, but it's like yeah. it's because she's a kid, because it's a new generation. I feel like that's part of the message too. It's like I don't know if Isabella could really imagine being free, but Emma can, and that's what makes all the difference between them. 
Yeah, the, the juxtaposition between the two of them is really interesting. I agree that the, we're ultimately not presented with Isabella's good or bad. I think the good thing that the flashback does is it makes us understand how she got there for sure. I think that the hands reaching out, I, well, I, I don't think any of us would have necessarily chosen differently in those, in those instances, I feel like. I think that's the biggest yeah. thing that the flashback does. So it's like, yeah, she's, um, she, we, she's ultimately still kind of bad and it does, and bad supporting the system. But at the same time, like, she's forced into these situations situations how she got there like what other choice does she have i do think it it does um i don't know absolve is a strong word but i think like uh it, it at least absolves how she got to where she is if not how she's currently behaving um, it makes her th- empathetic yeah but not yeah. that's the biggest it still, it still yeah. leaves like that air of mystery which i've always really enjoyed that the show has done with isabella is that like there's always that cloud of mystery and so i think this does a good job of continuing that while still like giving us something. Yeah, there's still a lot we don't didn't see in the flashback. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, like what what other things happen? What else is she doing? She we still don't know who she's talking to behind the scenes, like how she how connected she is with the demons. We just see flashes. Yeah. Um and yeah, and I think it and I guess I like I do think like I agree, I guess, overall. Thinking about it overall, her hanging herself, I, I think you make a good case, Michelle, but like, it's just also just like, I, I mean, just in the moment, like with that scene, that was, uh, it, fe- it felt very strongly. Maybe it was intentional. That would have been really interesting if it's intentional and they specifically subvert it to have her go back to the kids. Maybe, I feel like it's so intense, it feels so obvious, I feel like, when you're watching it for the first time, that it has to be them trying to subvert that, which I think is really cool. Um, be, yeah, just with the, the ropes. It's a, a gorgeous scene regardless. And getting back to the flashback, we mostly talked about it already, but, um, oh, she's, yeah. uh, getting, yeah, <laughs> she's, uh, gra- goes, go th- goes with the grandma at the time, goes to mom school. She's singing the song to the, her unborn baby. And then, um, Ray is, uh, finds Ray singing the song and, uh, real, they both realize that, uh, He's her kid. Maybe Ray realized it already. At least she realizes it then. And um, so, yeah, the, this the big twist here it should be noted. April apparently called this on earlier podcasts. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did you did you remember you had called this April? Yes. Well, but I mean, like, That's it. I'm not convinced by that. I'm yes. not convinced either. <laughs> I remember you called this, but I don't think you remembered. You. I don't remember calling. I remember calling that. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Was April, gonna be April, wait, wait, wait. Mom. That was a quick reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stop. <laughs> With April, first you said, yes, I remember. And then immediately yeah, upon was, well, head, You didn't let me explain no. myself. Because I remember calling that, like, one of the three kids was going to be, like, the child of Isabella. And then, I'll, like, because I, even, like, whenever I was watching it, I was just like, oh, so it's Ray that was Isabella's child. Like, I, I remember that I, that one of them was going to be. Well, I don't. I don't remember specifically calling out Ray. I just remember we, calling we, out we that we, uh, she was going to be someone's Steve, mom. Steve and Michael checked the tapes. You, you did say it. So, okay. Uh, there you go. Ray, April wins the predicting contest. Congratulations. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I Yay. Do, <laughs> yay. But I do also want to point out that I thought that, um, like, while the music is also really beautiful, I thought the use of color in Isabella's flashbacks was... Um, like kind of striking to me as well because like the first like flashback scene we have is her with Leslie and everything's like very bright and colorful Mm. and then as we continue on like through the flashbacks everything sort of loses its color and dulls out and then um the one of the like next scenes that we actually have like more color is whenever she's like singing like humming the lullaby and like rubbing her stomach and then like everything brightens up again and then the next one is her like realizing i guess that like ray i don't i don't know if she's like realizing that ray's her kid but like that's whenever we get that and that scene is also bright and colorful too so i thought that was really like an interesting use of color to sort of like i guess highlight like Oh, this is a highlight of her life. Then we get into all of these low points, and then we come like we come back out almost. I, I actually think I'm I read that a little bit differently because to me, the flashbacks they got grayer as they went. Like the scene with her rubbing her belly, like it's almost completely grayscale. Like it's just black and white in different tones. And then when we cut to her on the farm, then it gets colorful again. Like yeah. that's her lowest point almost. Cause like if you see her eyes in that scene, like they're like just completely clouded over. Like She's rubbing her belly, but, like, she almost seems kind of dead inside. Like, it doesn't seem like she really, like, this is not, like, a comment on whether you want kids or not, but it doesn't seem like she really 
wants a kid, it seems like, like she said, it was survival. Like, she yeah. did this for well, a reason. Well, uh, yeah. that, that's mm-hmm. kind of the thing is, like, I guess the, your ultimate, um, aside from being a grandma, like, your ultimate point of surviving is being a mom. And yeah. so that, like, her being able to have a kid, I guess, is, like, the final thing. And so that's how you know, like, oh, you get to be a mom now because and so it's almost like that's a kind of like a small victory and like for her is the fact that hey i'm getting to have this kid which means like i've secured my life this like this much further but it's also like this resignation of like once i have this kid like i'm stuck on a farm for the rest of my life like that it's like it's not like i i understand how you read it that way i'm just saying i read it the other way because like that scene is brighter but it's also just there's zero color like none at all it's completely black and white her her outfit is black and white. There's like even this like kind of like it, it, it's I, it's it's a weird word, but like dark light. Like the light coming in is not bright almost. It's just like this kind of ominous kind of light almost coming in, shining on her as she's humming. It's interesting discussion. I, well, something else I was thinking during this was maybe they like uh, entirely supply the the livestock via mom candidates, each having one child. At first, I was like, that can't be it. But if there's a lot of candidates and there's only like five farms, maybe that's just their entire supply. Uh, and then they kill the people that don't make it. Exactly. Yeah. And then they kill the moms that don't go to the farm or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's still unclear though. Still a lot we don't know, but th- there doesn't, there's kids on other farms. It's probably only, you know, 100, between 100, 200 in total. Um, yeah, there's, there's not what? Like a bunch. There's yeah. five plants, 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 30 something kids each. Yeah. And again, so. this, this brings up the question of again, like, how much does this, how many demons does this feed? Like, like what? Yeah, and this is just one region, right? Are the demons in control of the entire world? Is this a segment of the world? So Are get, get that, that, yeah. that transition, that transitions this next part. So the last part of the episode is, uh, they're running through the forest. Uh, Emma says, we did it, Norman. Um, and, uh, then they see the sunrise over the forest. And is Truman Show Theory dead at the yes. last shot of the season? Because it does, certainly so, yeah. does not seem like they're in a dome here. No! Oh my god. I don't think they're oh in a dome. But I'm not going to be convinced until we go there because it could just be a projection. It so, could be a wall. Look, you don't the, know. Look, yeah. the, the giant chasm wall was at, as dome as they needed to keep kids from getting out. I don't think they need <laughs> extra dome. Well, I, so the question, but the question is like, why is what is out here? Like, where is this? Are there other demons out here? Is the, do the, are the demons really just concentrated to headquarters in these five farms? Like, was there an invasion of Earth and they're only in this one place? Like, what? where are they exploring right now? What country are we even in? Is like, this, is this demon world? Yeah. United States, like yeah, right, like uh, I'm gonna guess that, it's Japan. This it probably Japan. Most <laughs> they all speak Japanese. Japan, that's a good guess. They, they, but it, it just even speak Japanese. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me <laughs> that this would be the only concentration of demons. Like yeah. that's what I'll say. Yeah. yeah. It, so yeah, I, I don't know where it's interesting. So they're very hopeful ending. They're running through the forest. I guess this is where we'll pick up in season two. You could kind of go anywhere from here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm just still kind of disappointed that we didn't end on seeing something more outside the farms, like maybe a shot of like, not a, like, like, like a facility or something at least because yeah, like, yeah. It, it, clearly they're, they'll run into something. Right. But so yeah, you could have teased it. You, yeah. It, yeah. It, it feels like we could have ended on that though. Like it could have ended on them seeing something. Even that's jumping. So, but so they thematically, they chose to end it. In a, exactly. Uh, cl- cliff cliffhanger uh, um, but, uh, they, but yeah so they the, i think the big decision is they wanted it thematically to be hopeful like michelle is yeah. talking about this kind of the, yeah, yeah which is pretty interesting um, and it's that, not th- even like because i remember seeing like oh is this, this just some kind of hopeful show with demons I, every so like, often no, 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 <laughs> no that's like, not true like that, that's it's a scary impression. show but like clearly the show doesn't want to like wallow in the, the the disparity more than it wants to champion select moments where they're able to have something to be hopeful about right. well but you I'm say fine. clearly but clearly as of the finale i don't think that was right clear before but yeah, that's, right. it's fine michelle it's, it's fine for a show to be good like like hopeful or not but the thing is in terms of like if this is a standalone unit if we're looking at this as a standalone mm-hmm. unit i like the choice of choosing this hopeful ending and just ending on that like it's just like that's really cool. I like that, and I'm fine with it. But if there's a second season coming, you need to prepare for that. You need to well, have different things. I think, and I think leaving us with hope but questioning, I think, is a 
kind of a better way to lead into another season. If, but again, I understand. If this, was, if this was an American TV drama, they would certainly have some sort of cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. I like more complete unified too. storytelling. I think this yeah. is, I, lo- I love this ending. I, 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 the I, thing to take into account too is how, like, how long ago do you think this episode was made? And they only yeah. just announced this week that yeah. they were getting a second season. So I think ending the season in this way where there's enough that you can build into a second season but if there was never a second season i think this is like a good like compact story oh, yeah. in it itself yeah, because it was, pro- it was probably in that i think i think they were probably in production on the season for a little oh. while if it's airing next year they would have had to but i think oh. the story still stands that it's, it's the best way to, to kind of get both not knowing what the future holds for your green light when you're yeah. like say writing or pitching the first season for yeah, this sure. This is a better series yeah. finale than if they yeah. s- ran into something. So, I yeah, well, I'm I'm fine with like I'll, I'll take the season as a unit, but certainly like it, 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 maybe there'd be more hype if we saw teased a demon or something for next season. There's like there's really no indication of what we're getting outside here cuz re- all we have is the kids are running and the demons are going to be chasing them next season as of now. That's that's And just to be clear, I'm just like nitpicking right now. Like this is not like a huge concern. Like I'm not like super sad that it's like this but it does it is a similar problem with the show is that we don't know where we're going and sometimes that's fun but i kind of like to know where we're going going into a new season like at least like yeah, broad we, we, andy we don't know what the pen is that's the i know thing we but i mean like know. what are we <laughs> oh God, <laughs> what are we doing we with stop that? it right now do how many of the kids don't have ears at least two but up to 15 like oh. how that's <laughs> the biggest question dylan i hope there's a flashback of every single kid cutting off their ear i just i just need a pile of ears andy like yeah where, where's... Dylan, we were talking about that like weeks ago we need this pile of ears we can, need can we, we open need the season with the shot of, of a pile of oh, ears God. that's the only no, way i'll no, be no, satisfied no, no. The what OT, if the cliffhanger OT, was a pile the <laughs> it's just all ears it's not a cliffhanger that's implied it's not <laughs> it's not implied it's not it is implied <laughs> yeah i think yeah the, the opening is just all ears or the last shot could have been ears or like, or, no, or like the, ears, the like, opening is one of those four-year-olds like finding e- a bunch of ears <laughs> and being yes. horrified yes yes <laughs> and then like and then, that's like, the post credit that's a the wacky post credit scene oh is, wacky <laughs> is, oh no, uh, no 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 the opening can be one of the four-year-olds finding a molotov there we go. Because <laughs> they're yeah, still they're... in there. They're yeah, still... what yeah. happened to the Molotovs? Did Phil go collect them? Oh like... my god, I hope Phil finds the Molotovs. <laughs> that's that's okay, the okay. first that's scene dangerous. of the next yeah. season is Phil collecting all of the Molotovs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it could go anywhere season two. I, I, I feel like a big thing I'm most interested in is like what this world is. That's still like all the demon structure is still unanswered. We're focusing on like our main character still. That's good. But, uh, will we get characters from other plants? Is Norman alive? A lot of, uh, potential interesting questions, uh, heading into to season two. Um, Norman's not alive. He's dead. And, uh, we know that for sure. Right. That's definitely answered. Um, uh, so I, I, is is I feel like la- last thing is like I feel like comparing this to the best of last season of anime, um, comparing this to like Bloom into You and uh, the Rascal uh, Bunny Senpai, those are my top two of last season. I feel like is this better this season, Andy? I, that that's my question. Oh, um, I don't. Uh, I think it's it's probably worse than Bloom, but it's I don't know. It's it's uh, the thing is this this so, season, this uh, the show is really good in the beginning and really good at the end, and there's like one or two highlights in the middle, but there's also some some uh, good but not great episodes. Um, I, I think the issue is that it's just so different than both very, of very those different. shows. Like, like, like it, this is like, like you were saying, like season one is like just a single unit, but Bunny Girl Senpai is like four single units, and Bloom is not kind of an entire unit. Like, there's yeah, Bloom like, is not and and, and so like that alone is just hard to grade. And then on top of that, there's just, those two are like romance shows, and this is completely different than that. And so like in terms of quality, I think this one make some de- some decisions in its animation and its sound design that make it different and like i think worth watching from a critical perspective and kind of be- like i think it's better in some ways like i think the direction like i really like how they have those motifs of of time passing and the music like i think that's really successful and impressive for an anime to do that because i don't think a lot of anime do that i don't think a lot of anime have these like shots of like lately they choose a motif to continue through an entire show and that's really great like i like that a lot but then it also doesn't have this stuff like in i don't think any of the characters are as endearing as any of the ones in like bunny girl senpai like i like i like those characters i really find their rapport really great and i really engage with them but 
it, it's just different. It's like, what do you like more? I think. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it's. It, uh, this reminded me. Where are the clocks this episode? Yeah. No, no clocks. Yeah, I think don't I don't need the clocks anymore. Yeah, they're the time has come. For yes, time. the time came. They're they're done. The, with the time clocks. came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow. <laughs> well, I think. Okay, so I think. So he, something to point out because I, I didn't really like get to talk about l- the last episode, but something to point out was because um, you guys talked about like how the clock struck and we've never had a clock strike before, but yeah. it did in the last episode when we just, when we started putting into effect the escape plan. And yeah. so I think that's like the, the culmination of the clocks. Like as soon as it strike like strikes midnight and starts chiming, like that was like, I didn't expect to hear a clock this episode. And I wasn't even thinking about it too, because it was like the clock chimed and here we are like time is up. Like, that's a really great point. And totally, I, I, yeah. And we didn't talk about that at all, but that is definitely what they were doing now that you mention it. Because, mm-hmm. like, the, the clock rang for midnight, and then we just didn't see a clock ever again. And, and we don't hear a clock. We don't... It, yeah, the it, only, the there, only there's sign no clocks of time where we're going. sun rising. Yeah. Yeah, the sun rose on... The, yeah, and that's kind of a time device, too, here yeah. at the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That just shows that... Yeah, I, I agree. There's a lot of thematic, uh, deep thematic, and... Uh, like uh, d- device, like sounds and visual devices and stuff that that do make this really worthwhile. Uh, like, yeah, um, I, I think that's the best way, best thing to say is like this show really understands show not tell, and I think it's a lot better than a lot of other anime I've seen. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking for consist more consistency from season two, yeah. but that's uh, literally what I'll say about every single anime, including Bloom, including Bunny <laughs> yeah. Girl. Like, uh, yeah, um, but yeah, I think this is better than uh, after episode one. I was like, episode one was fantastic; it'll never be as good as this. And I think this uh, last episode was almost as good as that. So I think like this ends, ends up being better than than I was I was anticipating. And it was a really fun journey to go on. It's a really fun show to talk about. Um, as evidenced by, you know, almost 90 minute podcast at the end. And, uh, it's, uh, been, been great with talking about it with everyone, with Steve. Uh, Steve will <laughs> insert him talking about something about Phil here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll be back for season two in sometime in 2020. That's very exciting now. Next Any final end. thoughts, Michelle? Uh, I mean, we have to wait a year and that's sad. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I mean, if we could get like five seasons of the show, I think it would be a really interesting ride to see how it progresses for sure. I'm excited. Maybe it'll be the new Hunter x Hunter in that way. The new Hunter x Hunter. Okay. No elaboration? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Andy, final thoughts. Uh, I just really like this show. And I really like, I, I think I kind of had my final thoughts already with the talk about the way the yeah, show that's good. Now yeah. I like it a lot. And just, nice. I, I'm excited to keep watching it. Yeah. April. Um, uh, obviously, I really loved the show. And like, I think the other thing, too, is that um, for me personally, like, like it was just enjoyable throughout. Even like the slow moments were like exciting and sort of kept me on my toes. And as someone like I go through phases with anime. And so this really like re sparked like, like my love of anime. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, like this show is beautiful and I need more of shows like this. And um, so I'm like thankful for that. And 2020 cannot come soon enough as much as I don't want to like time skip um, because that can be very jarring. But um, I'm really, really looking forward to season two because like if if they can just build off of this season, then like season two is just going to blow us all out of the water and be something truly incredible. Yeah, that'd be if it was better than this, that would be impressive. Um, yeah, I had a lot of, I've clearly had a lot of complaints, but it's, uh, it is really good season and really good episode. And I also think all of the, a lot of the things we're talking about are more of issues from a critical lens perspective than like a watching for enjoyment. I think it's like a better, even better show to just watch for enjoyment. So we're kind of ruining it by podcasting on it, but that's okay. But I mean, like, um, we're talking about really, think... we're, we're talking about heady stuff because the mm-hmm. base is good. Like yeah. we can get yeah. right. on the, the show. show. The, the, the only reason we can get this, Steve, is the show does inspire. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. And, so. and the other thing too is that even from like talking about it, because sometimes like I'll, I feel like I get burnt out on shows, like any show, if like I spend too much time talking about it. But like with this one, I was never bored with the discussion or um, like you know what anyone else had to say. Like so, I really 
I really enjoyed that. And again, like I looked forward to it every Thursday. And so I like I would sit there and like count down like me and my my coworker would be like, hey, have you seen it like show up online yet? No, it's not there yet. Like, is it on your verb? No. Is it on country roll? No. Like, <laughs> like, just like, like the anticipation, like every single week was just in, like, I love that. Like, I live for that high. So <laughs> Yeah, th- this is the anticipation type show. It's like a heavily serialized, uh, important week to week type show. And that is really fun to cover. We don't get a lot of that on this podcast. So that's, that, that yeah. was really fun. Um, love more, would love more animes like this to come that are like non problematic, s- heavily serialized. I like, what, what is, what are our options here? I don't know. We'll see next season, but, uh, <laughs> there is, I feel like there's not a lot of this. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel like the show was basically mostly non I mean, okay, the crone stuff. But like, well, now that now that she was off the show, we got. She, but I mean, like just, even then with crone, like at least her character was good. At least, yeah. Don't get Michelle started. But well, at least yeah, they sorry, did, sorry. Well, okay, sorry. Like, no, 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 Michelle. Thing, Michelle, though. Too, like I appreciated that, like Michelle put a lot of perspective for crone that we missed out, and so. I, like I like like I like after rewatching it, I was just like, oh, like you know, like I wish we could have had that justice for Crown. Hashtag, hashtag justice. justice for Crown. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the hashtag heading. Hashtag justice for Phil. I feel like that's the real hashtag. Here. No, it's no! fine. Oh my god, god. <laughs> he's left to die, Michelle. He's, he's not, not fine. He, no, he he's is not, not fine. For him. Okay, one thing I really do wonder about. And like, I honestly don't know, are they going to tighten up security like tenfold now that actual prison break has happened? Since that's never happened on the farms before that's a good, that's a good that question. we know of. Yeah. Well, so, so. It might be relevant if we, if we could, we could try to free other, uh, you know, other farms next season. That could be a thing. That I mean, that's what Emma do. said. Yeah. yeah. Well, she said she'll come back eventually. So it's yeah. like they're going some, but maybe they run. Uh, I guess they are running away from all the farms, but maybe they'll run into diff, diff, if there are different colonies and well, stuff. I think, maybe they'll run I think into it that, makes but. sense that they would have to go find, like, establish, I guess, their own a place to run away to. Yeah, yeah. run away to. Like, it doesn't do them any good to just go and yeah. gather more kids without, like, being able to, I say, dump them off somewhere. But, like, you have to, like, be, like, Bring them to a yeah. secure location. Yeah, I, I think they're. I think they've all been a little short sighted on the logic behind a world with demons existing. Like, how could there really be a pocket for them out? Like, I feel like there's. If if demons took over this one area, they have to be able to take over any area. So that's that's the main thing. Like, I'm not optimistic about our chances just running randomly in the woods. I feel like we need something to happen here. Um, Maybe but, this uh, is how you'll get more demons, Dylan. Mm. Um. Yeah. Or we could have no demons because maybe demons are only in that spot. I'm worried about that. But no, there's got to be more demons, and also the demons will be chasing them. So we'll get more demons. That'll be good. Okay. Just more, more demons, more eating children, more ears. That's what we want <laughs> for next season. More no, we want less ears. We want less ears. <laughs> yeah. less I thought you wanted more ears. We want um, more unattached ears. Okay. We want, <laughs> want the want them to be unattached okay. in a pile, but on the human un- <laughs> unattached ears. Yeah, that's really less, what we want. Less ears on heads, more. Yes. I want. Ears I want to. You know how they like release promotional images for shows? Like, I want just a promotional image for this show. It's just a pile of ears. A pile of ears. That'd be a great season two promotional image. Actually, I think, so. I think even just like a single ear would be great. Yeah, like a single ear in that bucket. Like that's it. That's the promotional image more, for the yeah. show. That, that hype us up with the ears. We're, we're Coming, waiting for it. April okay. 2020. They should yes. hire us for marketing, Dylan. Just oh, April 2000. Okay. Um, yeah. Let, yeah. Well, again, we'll we'll promote your show. It'll be all ear themed. So let us know what your thoughts on the ears in the comments. Uh, hashtag Justice for Phil. Um, hashtag Justice for Crone. Uh, and uh, what what do you want from season two? What do you think of finale? YouTube comments. Overlandminute.com. Thanks for listening to our all of our coverage this season. Uh, let us know what you thought of it. Subscribe to our main feed, our anime feed. Uh, who knows what next anime we'll talk about is? We'll see what's coming up. Oh, fruits basket. That's what we're gonna talk about. That's a very <gasps> yeah! Cool. yeah! Um, okay, we gotta be on that, April. Oh yeah. Yeah, I won't be on that. Those two will be on that. That's good. It's, <laughs> we got this. That's good. No, that I won't. Okay. Um, wow. That's that's not nice. Dylan, actually, I feel like you would really enjoy fruits. I probably oh, would. Yeah. You would for sure. I'll probably it's watch it. Yeah. I'll probably watch it. Um, but I'll send you uh, my DVDs. There you go. Oh, that's generous. Well, I could just watch. Yeah. I'll watch the reboot blind. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, Beatrice is probably an anchor fruits. But they'll check that out for our anime feed. Subscribe. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Any of our podcasts at youtube.com slash overly animated. But yeah, thank you guys for those of you who listen to all of these. Listen, you thought talk about it on our Discord at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. And if you enjoyed all this coverage, maybe you want to support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast. Caroline, aka Princess, and thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Hugh. Um, check out a bunch of stuff coming up at overlandmitted.com. Um, 
Yeah, just a lot of podcasts this weekend, so you'll see. You'll see all of them at overlayman.com. Thanks for listening, guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.